beer. How good is it? So every engineer is a maker's best friend. You know, you sit around, knock the top off a few coldies, come up with some new project ideas. The only problem is, when you start making your own, it can take up a fair bit of time. Take away from your project time. So here you have our standard brew in the bag five gallon setup. This is what we normally brew on. The process usually goes with us filling up this pot with a bit of water, turning on the gas, waiting for it to hit 65 degrees Celsius. Now that's the first problem with the brewing process. You need to keep an eye on this. And what frequently happens with me at least is I'm doing something else and it overshoots and then I have to wait another half an hour for it to cool back down. Once that's done, we put in some milled grain called grist and form a mash and we let that sit for about an hour. So again, we're setting our alarm clock and coming back when that's done. At that point, we grab this bag which holds the grist and we lift it out. It's another problem part in the process. It's hot, it's sticky, it's drippy. And then after that, we add more heat, bring it up to the boil and then at usually three or four points in the boil, specific times we add small amounts of hops to make the beer. At the end, we run it out to be cooled in another vessel. Now, surely there's a better way. Surely we can automate this. Hmm. So here you have it, the Brewbot, my entry to the Renaissance design competition. Quick overview, we've got a stainless steel, fairly rigid bag for holding the grist. We've got a winch system with a mash stirrer that that bag goes onto. We've got our brew vessel, electric heating element instead of gas, temperature probe, some level probes to know what the water level is, and obviously the Renesis board and some electronics to go with it. On the back is this gantry system that moves left to right and some hop droppers over here. So let's take a, a little bit of a closer look at some of the Brewbot pieces. We've obviously got the Renesis board. Got this acrylic uh, splash guard here, hinged, so you can still get easy access to the board. At the back, we've got our electronics on a proto board, some relays, transistors, resistors, mainly for uh, translating the levels into you know 12 volts, switching some higher currents, that sort of thing. Inside the brew kettle, we've got our heating element, temperature probe, level probes, as I mentioned. Down this end, we've got some high voltage electronics, mainly the 12 volt power supply and a solid state relay under this heatsink and fan. At the back, we've got a 12 volt windscreen wiper motor, a 12 volt solenoid. The windscreen wiper motor drives this uh, threaded rod here, which acts as a lead screw to move the gantry left and right. Now the gantry runs on these ball bearing door runners which are actually pretty neat. They hold up to 100 pounds and they do the job pretty nicely. I've even used the same ones to hold the lid steady as it goes up and down on the winch. Another 12 volt windscreen wiper motor does that job just like the mash stirrer. One feature that's important uh, about the Brewbot is pretty much everything that comes in contact with the Wort or beer to be is stainless steel. It's obviously important because the wort can be quite acidic, so all of these materials need to stand up to acid at temperature without leaching any dangerous chemicals into the beer. The UI for the brew bot is pretty simple, it's just a series of menus. So the first one is some settings to do with. Uh, mash times and temperatures and things like that. The other one that's important on such a prototype is the diagnostics menu, so that lets us run the various bits of hardware to test them, so let's go and look at some interesting bits. Let's go into the crane menu, let's run the crane down. So you can hear it running, the winch is going, you see it lowering the lid and the stirrer into what would normally be the mash and this works by um, a threaded rod like I mentioned and some little micro switches that act as level as uh, 
limit sensors. So it hit the micro switch there to indicate that it was at the bottom of its travel. Okay, let's look at the hop droppers next. So go into the hops menu. Let's run the first hop dropper. Now normally that would only run when it's over the kettle, but here I'm in the diagnostics menu, so it's not um, enforcing that rule. I'm in front of my PC at the moment to show off some of the networking abilities of the BrewBot. We're looking at the main web page running on the BrewBot. We can do things in here like look at the status of the system. This page is not really interesting at the moment because there's no brew running, but we can see the status of the hardware and the brew, uh, the settings that are being used, and we can link to the log files from here. We can also upload recipes, which mainly consist of a bunch of settings like the times and temperatures. We can have a look at the recipes that have already been uploaded to the system. This might be a good uh, time to have a look at the integration with the brew target recipe software. If I just bring that up, I've just made a new red ale recipe, and I can go to the tools menu and down to send to brewbot. And if I hit that, and then go back to the browser, should be able to see the recipe show up. And if I click on that. There's the recipe, and if I had loaded the brew bot with my grain and hops, I'd be able to hit the brew this now link and have it go. Also included in the brew bot is some other networking services. There is a telnet server. This is mainly for debugging. Um, lets us interact with the file system. It also lets us interact with the settings while the brew is running. So I can go in and do something like change a mash temperature or a mash time so I can set the mash time back to 60 like that. The other interesting service is the FTP service which lets us look at the file system as well but it's more useful for retrieving log files. I think it might be time to go and actually show a brew now so I'm going to go and mill some grain and measure some hops. Okay, we've just loaded up the brew bot with some grain and hops and we're just about to start a brew. So I'm going to go to the menu and hit brew start. And we can hear it starting to fill up with water. So we're just nearing the end of the first step, which is the fill and heat. And in a second, when it hits that upper level probe, uh, the solenoid should get, should cut out, and there it goes, and now uh, it should just be mainly heating. So if you have a look at the element there, you can see the little bubbles and uh, coming off because there's heat going into there. Okay, we're just about to hit our target mash temp, in, and at that time we should go on to the next step, which will be taking the grain into the water. So you can hear the uh, the motor for the back of the gantry has just started. Um, it is moving just very, very slowly. So it takes about five minutes to go all the way across. Okay, so we're just about at the end of the gantry moving across to pull, put the grain above the pot. And in a second we should see the grain lowered into the water to start the mash.
and you can just hear the mash motor started so it's stirring the mash we're just at the end of the mash now so in a few seconds we should see the mash there turn off and the grain come out of the mash now it's slowly coming out to give the water a chance to drain off as it comes out Okay, so we're just nearing the end of the sixth step, which is bringing the brew up to near boiling. And once it hits 90 degrees Celsius here, it should start moving the grain away from the mash. And there it goes. So we're just at the end of the <laughs> crane moving away and that was the first hop addition going in and it seems like we have about 35 minutes to the next addition. About 10 seconds left of the next hop drop, let's see if we can catch it. All the hops are in, we're nearly at the end of the brew, and there it is, it's finished. 162 minutes. From here, we'll run the uh, beer out into a container to cool. So this is how we finish our brew. We run it out of the kettle there, into this little keg, which we can seal, and let it cool slowly.